It's very easy to treat particularly that little piece of garden in front of your house as a car parking space. Concrete it over, cover it in gravel, park the mini there or whatever it is. But you know that car only occupies four pieces of ground about that big where its wheels are resting. Provided you can get it there firmly you can still have a garden planting low things which don't mind a bit of car traffic, thymes, chamomile, even grasses will cope with occasional parking from a car and when it's gone they'll get the sunlight they need and with plants in a garden you get wildlife, not enormous great geese and ducks maybe that you find at the Wildfowl and Wetlands Trust but you will get insect life in there, that in its turn will bring birds and small mammals, hedgehogs and such like. Do try and remember that, that your little tiny patch, however small and insignificant it seems, is part of an enormous quilt that is the British Isles. We need to make sure that we cater for wildlife and that we don't create places which are liable to flooding. A concrete front garden, if it pours down on it, where does all that water go? Down into the cellar? Who knows? Much better, I think, to remember it's a garden even when you have to park your car on it. And if you come here to this wonderful new rain garden at the Wildfowl and Wetlands Trust, You'll find lots of inspirational ideas, from the plants they're using to these wildlife towers that they're building out of just gash materials that would otherwise have been thrown away. They become home to beetles, bugs, butterflies, ladybirds, finding a home in there and enriching your garden and your life. There are an awful lot of don'ts in the world of gardening and conservation. Here at the Wildfowl and Wetlands Trust you'll find lots of do's, ways that you can start coping with wildlife in your garden and enjoying it. Garden without wildlife, a kiss without a squeeze.